come to come before you in thanksgiving and in repentance, Lord. We are thankful that you are loving and forgiving God. We thank you that you forgive us even when we do things that do not please you, because you are sovereign, you are mighty, you are just. Father, right now we thank you that we have to come into this building to share your word, share your truth, and to commune with you. Father, we ask that you touch those who are in mourning right now. We ask that you touch the families and the friends of those who have loved ones that have passed. We pray that you touch those who are sick, those who are healing. We pray that you touch them with your healing hand. Yes, Lord. We pray that any ailment that <laughs> anyone from the church is going through, that you will visit them right now. Yes, that you remind them that you are there, that you are the great physician and the counselor. Yes. While we pray for those who are here right now, that we open our hearts to hear your truth, to hear your word. Yes. That we will not only hear it, but we will be doers of your word. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the study of this word. And now we thank you and ask that you anoint and bless the teaching of this word. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone, for letting everyone out this morning. We're here in our fall quarter, Unit 1, Love Completes Fall, Love Completes Law Fall Short. We're on Lesson 2, September 10, 2023. Our devotional reading will come from Hebrews 4, 1 through 10. Our background scripture will come from Luke 14, 1 through 6. And our print passage will come from Luke 14, 1 through 6. Our key verse that we are reading in unison will come from Luke 14, 3 through 4, King James Version. The lesson topic for today is doing good deeds at the wrong time. As a the lesson aims tell us, as a result of experiencing this lesson, we the participants should be able to understand why Jesus' teaching, ch teaching challenged the religious sensibility of the Pharisees. Examine legalistic tendencies, personal and congregation, that block spiritual growth. Compare and contrast the Pharisaic law, laws with church laws or constitutional debates in their own denomination. The lesson matters because there is a time and place for everything. Is it right to do a good deed at the wrong time? Jesus demonstrated compassion for a sick man when he healed him at a Sabbath meal, despite the critical eyes of the Pharisees upon him. The lesson in focus tells us God instituted the Sabbath for, for God instituted the Sabbath for Israel when He gave Moses the Ten Commandments. The Israelites were to rest and remember how God created the universe in six days and rested on the Sabbath. God expected that Sabbath benefit His people and serve as a sign of Mosaic covenants. He made with them. Over the centuries, and by the time of Jesus' ministry, the nation's religious leader added multiple burdensome rules and traditions to the commandment to honor and keep the Sabbath holy. Eventually, these additions were elevated to the level of God's commandment. These additions and interpretations became a significant source of conflict between Jesus and the Pharisees, mainly when Jesus chose to heal, <coughs> heal on the Sabbath. Whenever he publicly healed on the Sabbath, the Pharisees accused him of breaking the Sabbath law. Yet, according to the Sabbath outlined by God in the Old Covenant, Jesus never broke the Sabbath. The Pharisees' legalistic tendencies had, had so blended their standards with God that they could not see that it was their Sabbath law. Jesus refused to follow. In contrast to the Pharisees' disregard for placing human needs above their religious sensibility, Jesus used the Sabbath to apply God's principle of mercy instead of sacrifice. The biblical in context. Exodus 20 through 24 contains the Ten Commandments and the civil and religious laws of Israel. The Ten Commandments were God's instructions that were to govern Israel's covenant relationship with them and one another. The first four detailed the basis of the relationship. God expects Israel to acknowledge and obey him because of who he is. The last six spelled out requirements for and responsibilities to families, with families, to family, neighbors, and community. A proper relationship with God determines how we can relate to others. Today's lesson is from the book of Luke, considered by some to be the most comprehensive of the Gospels. Luke made it clear in the introduction of his book that his purpose for writing was to give an ordered account of the events in the life of Christ. In Luke 14, Jesus challenges the religious leaders to misguided understanding concerning God's laws. Thank you. Now let's turn to our devotional reading, which comes from Hebrews 4, 1 through 10. Let, that, let us therefore fear, lest they promise being left. 
if us of empty streets, any of you shall see, seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preaching as well as unto them. But the word preaching did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that hear it, heard it. But we have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, <coughs> they shall enter into my rest, although the work were finished from the foundation of the world. But he has spoken in a certain place the seventh day of his wives, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. And in his place, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, Sin, therefore, it remaining that some must enter therein, and they do. They to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limit a certain day, saying to saying in David, today after so long a time, it is said to today if we hear today if ye hear. We will hear his voice, hearken not your heart. But if Jesus has given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaining therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest, he is also ceased from his own work, as God did from his. All right, thank you, Sister Mary. Amen. Now let's stand and read our key verse. It is lawful to be on the Sabbath day, and they lay up their feet, and he took them, and he of them, and let them go. Luke 14, 3 and 4. Once again, our lesson topic is doing good deeds at the wrong time, and we'll turn over to our teacher, Dickie Sanders. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. It's a blessing. Sunday school this morning. It's a true real blessing. We are real blessed to have such a great attendance in our Sunday school. We thank God for it, for the motivation that all of you all have to get up and get out to Sunday school on Sunday morning. We are thankful for that. Thank our superintendent and all of you that took part in the introduction of our lesson. Uh, doing good deeds at the wrong time. As she said, it's coming from Luke 14, 1 through the 6th verse. Uh, and we would like to start up this morning with our uh, first uh, outline is a dual setup. We're going to ask someone to read verses 1 through 4 and read out of your text there. <coughs> first and second paragraph. And it came to pass as he went into the house of the one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched them, and behold, there was a certain man before them which had a dropsy. And Jesus answered and spake unto the waters and Pharisees, saying, It is lawful to heal on the Sabbath day. And they healed their peace, and he took him and healed him and let him go. And Jesus met with the Pharisees on the Sabbath, the test the Sabbath, the test gives no other detail regarding the time and place of the encounter. The host is identified as a chief Pharisee, suggesting that he was a man of status among his peers on the San Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin Council. Jesus' enemies were present in full force. The phrase watched him further suggests that this unmanned Pharisee's motivates one of my Jesus was best and honorable. The Pharisees and scribes constantly follow Jesus, attempting to find reasons to accuse him and discredit his ministry. This said a man with drops who was present, possibly an unknown, an unknown pawn that the Pharisees used to test whether Jesus would break the Sabbath by, by healing him. Dropsy is a disease that involves excessive fluid and body tissue caused by a type of cancer or kidney problem. Supposing this man was a victim of Pharisees' deception, it would magnify their lack of compassion. However, it is more likely he was present because, as with many others, he had heard that Jesus did all things well. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kobe. Doing good deeds at the wrong time. When uh, our superintendent was reading in our lesson in AIM, it said compare the, and contrast Perry's law with church law, our constitutional debate in their own denomination. So the question before we go into our lesson, I want to ask is, what is the difference in the Pharisee's law or the Mosaic law, God's law, and our my law? The legalistic part? Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what that was. They're going by the letter of the law mm -hmm. um, being so strict that you can never um, really follow. sanctuary is not saved, they're not a child of God. And when you have a legal issue and you go and say, well, we, the Bible say this, well, the Bible say that, but now we're dealing with man's law. So that's why there has to be something in place to deal with issues that arise from people that are not saved and not born again. And a lot of times when people come about the church got by law, that's an indication to me that that's somebody that don't want to do what the right to be doing. <laughs> okay? Just to throw that out there. We're going we're gonna to go with that first outline. This is, is dual, uh, dual set up. She's, uh, he read this. And once again, Jesus accepted a Pharisee's invitation to dine in his home. Remember last week we, we dealt with the invitation Jesus had. That is what on the Sabbath set the stage for the continuing controversy between the written Mosaic law and the oral law, the rabbinical interpretation of it. Jesus continued to confront the Pharisees on their nitpicking rules that devalued people. Luke's observation, observation that they were Watching him closely suggests that this invitation law they set up to find something he said or did to you to condemn him to the Jews and the Romans. Now, in verse 1, it said, And it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees, now, the chief Pharisee that Kobe read, he had to have a status that was, was above the ordinary members of the Sanhedrin Council. So he would have more authority or more input or uh, uh, persuasion in these things. So that's a key fact, uh, to eat bread on the Sabbath day, and they watched him, looking for an opportunity to accuse him. Now, so they watched him. They were looking for something to accuse Jesus of. And, and let me show you how, how important this word. Now, like Tony said, that they, they, they held that the, the Mosaic law was above everything else. And I was looking and research what was the penalty for breaking the Mosaic law. I'll give you two verses. In Exodus 31 and 15, it says, six days may work be done, but in the Sabbath, Sabbath is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work shall surely be put to death. Okay? This is repeated in Exodus 35 and 2. It repeats the same thing that I just read. So now they were not only just wanting to point fingers at Jesus, they were trying to find some accusation to take him before the, the authority and the Roman government because he was breaking the Mosaic law. Okay? Now it said, and they watched him. 
Jesus was under constant surveillance. They watched everything Jesus done. And you know, sometimes today, and we have to be careful, I tell all the time, we as, as Christians, we especially as leaders, we are under surveillance. People don't want to come to church anyway. And the first thing they want to do is accuse someone that already going to church or somebody in leadership. And you know what they say? You know you see me going. <laughs> you know you see me going. Look at it. They hold a position in the church. They do this in the church. So they were looking for a reason to accuse just like they did Jesus. They also have us as believers under surveillance. Now, in verse 2, it says, Behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. Now, Kobe read and explained what the dropsy was. It was a, 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 a disease that built up excessive fluid in the body and it would make a person look puffy in the eyes and puffy in their body and their fluid tissue and everything. So they watched him and they were looking for this point to see if Jesus was going to break the law plus see if Jesus had compassion. He had compassion. They wanted to know that. Then he was a lawbreaker. Now that's a dual setup. Okay? Now, and he, he said, and Jesus answered and spoke unto the lawyer and the Pharisee saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Now Jesus knew what they thought. He knew they knew it wasn't supposed to heal on the Sabbath day. But you know, there's so many times the Bible tells us, and I'm looking at that, where Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. Okay, in, in the Bible, in, in Simon Peter's mother-in-law, he healed Jesus, healed her in Mark 1, 29 through 31. There was a man that was uh, born blind in Mark, uh, uh, in John 9, 1 through 16, Jesus healed him. There was a man that had a withered hand in Mark 3, 1 through 6. And the man, a woman that was crippled in the synagogue. Get that now. She was crippled in the synagogue. And Jesus healed her. And, 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 this, and that in, in Luke 13, 10 through the 7. But what struck out to me was that she was in the synagogue. In other words, she was in the church. And they were still watching. Is he going to break the law? Well, let me ask you. What's more important? To help someone or to try to follow every letter of the law. Help someone. Because Tony said a moment ago, the Bible tells us, if you guilty of breaking one of them, you guilty of all of them. So that's why Jesus let them sent, God sent Jesus to save us because we could not be saved through the law. We could break the law so easily and we messed up. He sent Jesus to die for our sin because we, before then and even after then, we get a bunch of lawbreakers. But we thank God that he put us under God's grace and mercy that when we fail and when we break the law, we have an advocate with the Father and that is Jesus Christ because we are all faulty at best. Okay? Now, this man, no doubt, is, I was reading some commentaries, so they probably went there and picked this man out. I don't know if he was a part of the council, but he was invited and part of the setup. We're going to see him this Make sure Jesus see it when he come in. But I like what Jesus said now. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Then check out verse 4. And they held their peace. Now they knew, but they didn't say nothing. We ain't going to say nothing. You know how he is. He ought to know. He, he, he been around here long enough. He ought to know what the law said. We ain't going to say that. We just going to sit there and watch him. We just going to sit there and watch and see what he did. Now, and the Pharisees and the lawyer had knowledge, but no action. Okay? They had knowledge, but no action behind what they thought they knew. Now, they knew the law, but what were they doing? They didn't have no action. They just sit there and nitpick, fault fine, and had no knowledge. 
Now, let me ask a question. I, I, I'm not nitpicking, but I want to ask a question. How is it that we are sometimes in the church learning and don't have an answer? The law you knew, but they didn't have an answer. We learn the word, but we don't put it into action. Do we do we uh, have compassion to to the sick and shut in to people that are less fortunate than we are? And and and, and you know, a long time ago, I remember. I know Matt and, and the Sister Helen and all those that know that there was a, a time where where the mothers of the church they didn't just have a name in the missionary board. That missionary boy would work. Mm -hmm. Sunday evening wasn't just time to go home and watch the TV. They had a plan to go and, 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 and sister so-and-so wasn't at church or brother so-and-so wasn't at church. When church was over, they went to not to be nosy, but to check on, mm -hmm. to help. See, now we, we, we fail sometimes because we have lost that. Amen. Amen. We lost that. We'll come in here and sit all day long. Clock watch. Because I got something else to do. And it ain't about going to visit nobody. Amen. <laughs> so when we learn, we ought to have this knowledge with action. Okay? Now it said, past experience with Jesus in the presence of human suffering informed the Pharisee that he was refused. He always refused to ignore it. The reason was if Jesus refused to help the man, he would be uncompassionate. But if he healed him, he would violate the Sabbath and they could accuse him. Now, accusing him, but then you know what? I can imagine when you look at verse 4, verse 3, he, Jesus asked them, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Question to them. Okay? And they held their peace. They didn't say nothing, okay? And then, and he took him and healed him and let him go. You know what a Pharisee was feeling? <laughs> he broke the law. But he done done more than we ever done. Because if they really was, was going to do anything, that was their time. They could have grabbed Jesus, come on. We're going to drag you to the, to the authority. You just broke the Sabbath law. But when Jesus done good, he just said they didn't ever did. Still didn't say anything. They didn't say nothing. Because Jesus had done something that they have not done, could not do, and the only thing they could do was follow the letter. That was it. That's all they could do. And Jesus was doing good, and I'm pretty sure Jesus knew what the Mosaic law was. But Jesus didn't come to fulfill the, the Mosaic law. Jesus came to, to do what his Father will, seeking to save that which is lost, to, to help to heal the sick, to give sight to the blind. That's what Jesus came for. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to come to learn the Mosaic law. His father gave it to Moses and right, so I'm pretty sure Jesus knew what they were. But he came to do the work of the father. Amen. And I can imagine, you know, they would say, okay, yeah, we're going to sit there and watch. And if he do this, we got it. We got it. Did you see it? What he just done? We got it. But you know what? When it comes to us as believers, we are always choose to do good. Amen. To be able to help someone. Right. You know? That's what we choose. And now, we're going to have a lot of accusers. But I learned this about people. They're going to have something to say if you don't do nothing. Right. Mm. They're going to have something to say if you do something. Amen. That's true. Amen. You sit down and do nothing. Amen. And they don't do nothing. <laughs> Get up and start doing something. He think he run everything. All right. <laughs> that, that's right. Cannot satisfy. But Paul said, I would rather please God Amen. than to please man. Amen. Okay? 
So we need to understand that, that our mission is to please God because people are going to talk, 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 talk whether you're doing good or whether you're doing bad. Amen. And they're watching. If you don't do nothing, they're going to say, you know what? <laughs> ain't nobody from the church came by. Mm -hmm. And you come by, they ain't had no business to come by. Right? <laughs> you yeah, know, let's take <laughs> that's, that's the talk that you hear. And that's just, I'm just being real. That's the talk that you hear. But do what God requires of us. Okay? Let's look at our second outline. It said, going against the grain. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 and 6. We ask someone to read that in that paragraph for us. And answer them saying, which of you should have an ass or an ass? or an ox fallen into a pit, and would not straightway pull him out of the Sabbath day. And they could not answer him again to these things. <laughs> the Pharisees, the Pharisees remained silent, but Jesus did not allow the legalistic pity to escape unchallenged. He exposed their insensitivity and lack of pity for humanity by asking which of them would not pull a donkey out of, out, would not pull a donkey or an ax out of a pit on the Sabbath. Jesus knew that if they had enough compassion to rescue their farm animals on the Sabbath, then how could they object to him having a man made in a man made in God's image on the Sabbath? Again, they were silent, suggesting that they consider animals of more importance than humanity. Unfortunately, people today, even in church, often display more regard for animals than for their suffering people and a perishing world. The Pharisees and scribes match their legalism and self righteousness as defending God's Sabbath law. In reality, they were denying God by refusing to show love for others. Why and how should believers apply this lesson to, this lesson to their lives? God's word commands us to demonstrate compassion and love towards all humanity, even our enemies, despite circumstances, times, or days. Jesus responds with his critical righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes challenging the faith community to examine church laws and non-biblical traditions or any tendencies to legalistically block other spiritual growth, dis discriminate and exclude particular groups, or overlook the rules of love in all aspects of life. Thank you, Nick. Going against the grain. Now, <laughs> when, she, when she read that, because Jesus posed another question. He asked him first, well, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? They didn't say nothing. He asked them again, which one of y'all would have your ox or ass fall in the ditch and wouldn't put them out? Again, they didn't say nothing. I can imagine they were sitting at dinner and another grab a biscuit. I would have said something, but I was eating. <laughs> Just a little funny there, but you know. They, they didn't say anything because Jesus posed two questions that they knew the answer, but they still want to hold to what they thought the law was. Now, when Jesus asked them that, they didn't say nothing. He said, there is nothing we can hide from our God. He is omnipotent is all-knowing and can discern every thought and intention of the heart. Jesus was aware of this legalistic crowd motivated, motive, I'm sorry, and used their knowledge of permissible Sabbath day provision against them. Jesus justified his act of mercy by appealing to their practice regarding animals on the Sabbath. He knew they would pull their livestock from danger on the Sabbath, so why not heal humanity created in the image of God they pretended to love? Our Lord used common sense and ordinary compassion to demonstrate that his actions per perfectly fulfilled the spirit of the law. Their silent and second time exposing their false piety and proved that they had more love for animals than people. The church must recognize that legalism and self-righteousness are alive and well among sincere and committed religious people. The responsibility is to refuse elevating the knowledge of the word 
above applying this principle to our lives and ministry. Now, they knew that, okay, it was all right to go there and get your ox or your ass out of the ditch. They knew that was okay. But Jesus was asking, what's more important that you go there and get your ox out the ditch or your, your ass or your donkey is in the ditch? Mm -hmm. You want to get him out the ditch on a Sabbath day, but there is somebody that needs help and you can't do it because I'm going to church. I said a lot of times we pass the church on the way to the building. We pass the church on the way to the building. I wouldn't stop and help them, but I'm running late. That's right, and I got my suit on. I ain't gonna get dirty. Now the the Pharisees knew in, in, in two passage scriptures in Exodus twenty three and five. The law permitted them. To do this. They knew that. In Exodus 23 and 5 it says. If thy seed thy ass. The ass of him that hated thee. Somebody you don't even like. Somebody don't even like you. He said if you see thy ass of him that hated thee. Lying under his burden. Mm. He, he burdened down. He got his cart loaded with wood. And he can't pull it. And wood is forbear. To help him, they say you should surely help him. Okay? And then in Deuteronomy 22 and 4, he said, Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. Now, these are more like law that said it's all right. If you see somebody's animal fall down on his load or he's in a, a mud pit on a Sabbath day, whether he like you or not or you like him or not, you're supposed to go in heaven. Mm -hmm. They understood the law. Mm -hmm. That's okay to do that. But there is somebody in need. But I... Uh, Man's law or God's law? Mm. The disciple asked Jesus which was more important. Which of the law? They laid them all out there for Jesus. Which is most important? Jesus told us that they all good, he said, but I'm going to leave you with another. That you love ye one another. And by this, the world will know that you are my disciple. In other words, no matter what the situation is, love is greater. Amen. Love is greater. Now, some people might not like it, but you could be on your way to church Sunday morning. I don't want nobody to use this excuse unless it actually happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could be on your way to church one Sunday morning, and somebody call you and say, look, I'm, I, I really need you. I'm, I'm in a dire situation here, and, and I know you're on your way to church, but I need you to come and help me. What you gonna say? That's what you say. I'm on my way. Where you at? Or I'm I'm here to church. I'll call you when I get out of church if you still need me. <laughs> That's not God's way. God understands that we go and help someone instead of coming in the church and look like a cross. Instead of going to help someone. I ain't trying to tell nobody to miss church. But we got to have a discernment if what is God and what is man law. Understand? That's what I mean by a lot of times we, we pass the church. We pass up opportunity trying to get to the building. There's nothing wrong with doing good. In verse 5 it said, and answer them saying, which of you shall have an ax, ass on an ox, fall into the pit, and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? No answer. And they could not answer him again to these things. They knew what was right 
but they was caught up in the legalism. Mm -hmm. The legalism has caused a lot of problems and wreaked habits and, and things when we as believers, we should understand what God requires of us when it comes to helping one another. It's not pointing fingers. It's not pointing fingers. And I was listening to a preacher this morning. I just turned the television on and 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 he was speaking and he said one of the I be have it, one of the problems that we have and befall us is uh pointing fingers at one another. And he said he said he caught up, he almost got caught, he, he said, I got caught up in it myself one day. He said, I was looking at a preacher preaching and he was doing something and he first thing said, oh, if that was me, I wouldn't have done it that way. Mm -hmm. He said he caught, he was convicted because he didn't know the situation. He did not understand why he was doing it that way or nothing. He didn't look at how he was done it. Mm -hmm. We can't look at how we're, we'll do things. We have to look at things and be done God's way. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with doing good deeds. It could be at the wrong time. But good is going to outweigh our choices yeah. when we do things that please God. Mm -hmm. That's the key. You know, I, I, I had a question one time and several years ago. Uh, somebody called me and they asked me a question. And I, I had to think about it, did a little research, and they said, uh, hey, uh, there's this lady that needs some help. They actually need a little financial help. And she said, the only money I had was what I was going to pay in church. And she said, I don't, I don't really know what to do. I said, well, if you sincerely have that money to pay in church, and you understand sincerely that that person needs it, I told her to help her. God understands. He knows our heart. Oh, yeah. You know? He knows our heart. So she followed her heart and said, I'm going to do it. I said, do it. We got to give us discernment of the Spirit. Okay? He give us discernment of the Spirit. And the Bible even kind of, uh, well, it don't kind of, it tell us to be careful how we entertain strangers. Because we can entertain angels unaware. Glory. So, well, I, 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 wanna, I ain't got nothing but what I'm going to give in church. And God sent somebody to buy your door. Bring the church or help that person. That's why we ought to be willing to seek God for direction. Okay? And then, then we'll know what's the right thing to do and we follow God's guide. And you know, uh, that question was asked me about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Got a call. One of the friends said, oh, well, we, we find out we're going to start having church on Sunday. I mean, Saturday, because that's the Sabbath day. And said, which is Sabbath? I said, well, I said, to me, what's more important that God wants to worship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So if, if I break out in a worship on Monday, that's my Sabbath. <laughs> That's my day. You might break out and worship on, on Thursday. That's your Sabbath. See, the legalism that they get caught up in, uh, this, like Tony said, can't do this on this day, can't do this on that day. The most important thing, he said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. He didn't say remember Monday, remember Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He said remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's the most important. If nothing else, we thank you. We're going to turn it back over to our super. Let's stand for our closing prayer. Amen. Precious Lord, this is our Father Pizza, a family of faith and welfare of others, of other church leaders, and now groups of church tradition that might hinder us from meeting people's needs. We seek your forgiveness, direction, and gifts as we commit to love without 